Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to using Flipgrid as a teacher. So to get started, let's go ahead and sign up. Now you can sign up using a Google account or a Microsoft account. Either one, it works the same way. Sign in with a Microsoft account here. And this is my grid. Now I want to point out that if it's the first time you've ever signed up, you might be asked for some profile information. As you can see here, teacher, my the grades I teach or subjects I teach, and location. You can also connect some social accounts. The other thing that you may be asked to do is to choose whether or not you want to participate in Grid Pals. Grid Pals is a network for connecting with other classrooms that are using Flipgrid. By default, you're hidden. If you want to turn it on, you can turn that on. Uh, just fill in, a, fill in a little bio information and you're good to go. For now, we're going to keep mine hidden. So now, let's look at how to create a Flipgrid grid. It's important to think of a grid as like an online classroom and within that we'll create topics for students to respond to. So I'm going to create my new grid and for this grid type I'm going to make this one a PLC or public grid. You can also restrict access to just people who have an email address issued by your school you can also create a student ID list, which is good for students who don't have email addresses. And we'll just call this one my sample grid. We'll have a code that's assigned to it. That's the code that students will use to access all things available to them through the grid. And we can choose a little mascot or header image if we like. You'll see here you can add a grid password if you want to. For this one I'm going to leave that one turned off. And now I'll launch my grid. Let's just click all set for now. And when I do that we'll see that there are two default topics that Flipgrid provides for us. There's a let's connect and there's an ideas one. The ideas one is turned off, is inactive by default. The let's connect is just a simple prompt to have people introduce themselves. Let's create our own new topic though. We'll call this one exit ticket for a week ending 12-14. Now we're going to let students talk for one minute in their videos. You can see there you can make it as short as 15 seconds or as long as five minutes. One minute should be sufficient for this. And in my topic description or question, I'll just prompt students to say, share something you learned in class this week. Now let's take a look at our topic privacy. You can turn on video moderation so that no one can see the videos until you've previewed them. I'm going to leave that one off for now. Our topic will be active. You also have the option for frozen. Frozen is an option you might use after students have posted some responses and you don't want any more responses to come in. You can also make it inactive, in which case no one will be able to see it or respond to it. I'm going to make that one active. I'm going to make it active starting right now. As for a topic resource, I can record a video or upload an image to use as part of a prompt for my students. So I'll do that right now. Let's record a video. Hi class, it's Mr. Byrne. I just want to have you share today something you learned in class and why you think that's important moving forward. 
So when I'm happy with my recording, I'll click Next. I can play it back. I just want to have you share today something you learned in class and why you think that's important moving forward. So now I'll click Next. I can make a little selfie, of my cover image for the video. And we can now put in some stickers and decorations if we want on top of that selfie. And so that video is now something students will see when they go to our Flipgrid topic. As you can see here, we can also add topic attachments, but I'm going to leave that blank for now. And those stickers and drawings that I just put onto my video, you can actually disable them for students. So if you don't want them to use them, you can turn those off. And here we can allow students to react to each other's video entries, or we can turn off those options as well. Now let's create the topic. So here's a direct link to our topic. I'm going to open that in a new window so you can see it as a student would see it. So the student sees it this way, and the student doesn't have any responses showing yet. They can play back the little video prompt if they want. There's also their prompt. Then they can simply click the plus button to record. Now, in this case, where it was a public Flipgrid topic and a public Flipgrid grid, kids will be required to log in. If I'd used an ID system, using, and I can do that in the setup, uh, Students would use their Flipgrid IDs rather than their Flip, rather than their Google or Microsoft accounts. So here, the student will sign in. And now the student's able to record. You can see up there for up to one minute. Well, in class this week, I learned about the Pythagorean Theorem, and I think it's important because it's the backbone of many of the things we learn in geometry. And then again, student can snap, snap a selfie, add any number of decorations that they'd like. And submit it. So now that response is down there. Now let's close out this student view and look at the teacher view. So the teacher, who may have refreshed the screen, can now see that Mason has submitted a video, can watch it, the student can receive feedback from the teacher here. And then either email that, but if your students don't have email, just copy the feedback link and you can give that to them anywhere you like, Google Classroom, OneNote, wherever you would post a link for your students to see it, you can put it there. And now my feedback sent, so let's close that out. Now with any of these videos, we have actions down here on the bottom right corner. You can download the video, you can download the image, you can move it, uh, you can even add it to a mixtape, and I have a video about mixtapes. Uh, that's more of an advanced feature for gathering together the highlights of a Flipgrid topic. And again, this is all part of a Flipgrid topic. The grid itself back here has these three topics in it. And if I want people to see the grid, they simply go to that link. 
and that will show them all of the topics that are available. You can see here, you can also share it to Google Classroom on Remind or even embed it into an existing web page. So that's a short introduction to getting started with Flipgrid. For more tips about Flipgrid, please feel free to look through my YouTube channel. And for more tips and tricks on anything in EdTech, please check out freetechforteachers.com or practicaledtech.com.